Good morning, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome to the third episode of our Nuclear Craft uh, Mod Spotlight slash How To. <laughs> um, so, today we're going to be looking at the fission reactors. And I've been playing around with them quite a bit. Um, just a heads up, they can explode. Um, this is one that I was playing with. It was a 17 by 17 um, and I, I was messing with it and it was like my first design um, where I was pretty much just throwing blocks in there to see what they did um, and then I ended up just turning it on and letting it explode <clears throat> and that was the crater that was caused and that like I said that was a max size now it seems like that should have exploded but uh, it didn't and there's a couple other little spots like that but um, so just keep keep in mind that these will explode um, also if you it was a little bit after um, I released the video, but I added some um, annotations. These can explode now if the heat reaches maximum. The fusion reactors can. Um, also, down in the description, I'll include a link in this video too, um, but there is a GitHub that um, has all the fuel um, efficiency and power and, and everything, um, and just a lot of good information that I was looking through. Um, so I'll include a link to that as well if you want more information on that um, down in the description. So anyway, um, these fission reactors, they kind of remind me of the IC2 reactors in some ways. Um, now they can be a multi, they're a multi-block structure. Um, you can build them if you want to. You could um, actually set one up. Um, as just a one by one if you wanted to. Um, the only thing it requires is of course a controller, um, some reactor casings around a fuel cell compartment and we could close that in and that would run. <laughs> However, if we were to throw fuel in that you'll notice that it's gonna get 780 heat per tick, um, 1200 RF per tick which isn't honestly terrible for that little uh, design but you're going to have to manage it because once this heat rises um, without any cooling cells in there, you're not going to be able to get that heat down. So, for example, if I uh, threw a lever on that and let this run for just a second, uh, you'll notice the heat starts building up. And, um, you know, we're gaining a little bit of power right here, um, but this heat's going up and it's not going to be able to go down, which is dangerous because once the heat hits maximum, it's going to explode. So you're going to have to shut that off um, and let that heat drop. Now, like with this... Uh, with the uh, fusion reactors these if you attach a comparator to this um, it will emit a redstone signal so um, you could do something with that since these are turned on and off by redstone so for example if we did that um, and then let's throw down some redstone here uh, you'll notice right now we have a power of 8 and if we ran this a bit more there's a power of 9, 10, and so on. And it's going to cap out at around, um, like right in here. So it doesn't actually measure um, the full power. Um, so just a heads up on that. However, I wouldn't, honestly, you could do like a, like a burst reactor design. But honestly, I like the, um, the just stable style. Um, this one not being not being one of those, but if we look over here, um, this one for example has a negative heat. That's ideally, if you want to run this constantly, that's what you would want, um, because that way you're not actually producing um, any heat to where it would explode. Um, so this is a one by one, which is the very smallest that you can build. This is the largest that you can build. It's a 17 by 17 by 17. Um, so this is the maximum size reactor. Now it doesn't have to be equal. So for example, um, you could do say a three by two um, design or uh, just whatever kind of suits your, um, your needs and your resources and everything. So um, the way you'd build this and the way it's measured is for example, that would be a three by two. Um, it's the interior sides that decide the, um, the size of the reactor. So, like, technically, when you build this out, um, let me grab my wand, um, when you build this out, 
Of course, dimension wise, this takes up four by five, but it's a three by two because that's the interior size. And then we could set the height to, you know, whatever we want and um, then just throw some reactor casings over the top of this. And then if we put um, a controller here, you'll notice that it is a reactor. And I've noticed that it does not have any issue detecting the multi-block at all. It's instantaneous. Even when I did the 17 by 17, it just picked it up and it works perfectly. Um, so let's build one. Um, actually, before we start building one, let's talk about some of the blocks that you would put inside of these. Because, for example, if we bust this open, um, of course, this one is not really an efficient design. Um, but you'll notice that I have tons of room to add to this. Um, basically, you're going to fill these, the inside of this, up with blocks. Now, you don't have to fill it all up. You could do as little as go in there and throw a fuel cell inside of a 17 by 17 and call it a day. Um, however, you know, that would not be efficient. Um, so, for starters, the main block that you're going to need on the outside is reactor casings. That's going to cover the outside. Uh, now, these corners and bottoms, you can put blocks on here, um, pretty much any kind of block that you want um, to use as decoration. But um, the actual walls there do have to be reactor casings. Um, then there's also this reactor speed block. Basically, if you put these inside of the reactors, um, you can actually see a little bit of tooltip information here, um, but they are going to increase the depletion rate of your cells. So um, the bur it's going to decrease the burn time on any fuel that you put into these. Um, so just a heads up on that, that's what those do. If you want to deplete your cells quicker, um, you would use these. Now they don't really... Um, affect the speed or the power production at all um, from from what I've seen testing them uh, they really just uh, decrease that uh, burn time on the fuel so and with the with the better fuels I did notice that it does take quite a few of these to actually notice a sizable difference in the speed um, so you probably want a few of those if you're wanting to deplete quicker um, the next thing that you're going to be putting a lot of in there is graphite blocks. Now you have to be careful with these. Um, basically they are going to increase the energy output of your uh, reactor, but also the um, heat generated by your reactor. And you can see some math here. Um, so it says... Uh, an efficient reactor of C cells and heat level H using a fuel of base power P, each graphite block produces C times P times 1 plus H divided by 1 million, right? Yes. Uh, divided by 10 RF per tick and uh, C times P divided by 5 heat per tick. So basically, if you want to do the math on that, your cells are going to be the amount of these fuel cell compartments, which we'll cover those next. Um, and then, of course, your heat level is the amount of heat in there. Um, and then P will be the type of fuel, the base power of the fuel that you're using. So um, if you want to get really into optimizing and doing all the math, um, you can just find it right here. Um, then there's these fuel cell compartments. And basically, these are where your fuel is going to go. Um, and the more of these that you put into there, um, for example, like if I just put one into a reactor, it's going to give me a little bit of a, or a de you know, a decent energy increase and a heat increase. However, there is also math with this one, um, a little bit more simple math, I guess. Um, so for every one of these that you place next to each other, it's going to increase the heat and energy generated. Now, if I was to put, say, uh, two of these together, uh, if you look in here, the math is uh, it generates N plus 1 times the power, and uh, N is the adjacent cell. So, for example, this one has one adjacent cell, so it would be 2 times the power. 1 plus 1. Um, and then N plus 1 times N plus 2 divided by 2 times the heat. So we've got one adjacent cell, so that'd be 1 and uh, so that'd be 2 times 3 is 6 divided by 2, so you would have 3 times the heat. Now from what I can tell, 
I would I would say the best way to set these up is just in sets of two, um, because if you do three, you're going to get triple the power um, on this. For example, on this middle one is going to get triple the power. However, it's going to get six times the heat, um, and it would keep increasing as you built, um, you know, additional ones. So when I first started setting up the reactors, I was like, well, let's just make a pillar of these, and everything. And then I noticed it really was not efficient because you're getting six times the heat on the majority of those blocks, um, you know, except for the very top and very bottom, which only has one adjacent. So um, personally, I would think just small sets of two would be the most efficient um, because you do get the double power output, um, but that heat really hurts when you start building a bigger reactor. Um, and when you start messing with your reactors and trying to fine-tune the best balance between staying in the negative heat and getting as much power as possible, um, you can kind of think of fuel cell compartments as big increases to power. Um, even by themselves with the larger reactors, I've noticed a large increase in power for just adding one of these, but you also get a, a big increase to heat. Whereas graphite is a smaller increase to power, but also a smaller increase to heat. So um, those are your main two blocks that are going to increase um, the amount of power and heat that you produce in your reactor. So definitely pay attention to those. Um, next up we have coolers. <coughs> so there's a lot of different ones of these. Um, there's these basic ones like the cooler reactor cores. Um, these... Um, or no, not those, sorry, standard reactor cores. Um, the way these work is they're going to, re for each of these, they're going to remove 30 heat per tick out of your reactor. However, if they're adjacent to another standard reactor cooler, they're going to get double uh, efficiency. So you're going to get a 60 heat per tick um, decrease. Now, most of the coolers have a little caveat like that. Um, so it's definitely something that you want to keep in, keep in mind when you're building out your reactor. Sorry, my nose is all stopped up today a little bit. Um, you also have this water reactor cooler. Um, it's doubly effective when adjacent to at least one reactor casing. So you get the 60 heat per tick, um, and you could just put them around the edge of your reactor. Um, you know, for the early reactor cooling. However, um, some of these other ones here have... Uh, a lot higher potential so the coolant reactor core is an 80 heat per tick um, decrease and it's doubly effective when adjacent to at least one water block so you can put just water blocks into your reactor however keep in mind let me turn this volume down a little bit it seems really loud to me um, the water block itself doesn't really do a whole lot it's only like a one heat per tick uh, decrease and it does increase the energy by, I think, one, if I recall. Um, but it's very, very minute, and I honestly wouldn't suggest, um, unless you just have to use um, this one, I honestly wouldn't suggest it. Now, if you have additional mods, there are more coolant uh, blocks. So, for example, cryothium um, is present if you have thermal expansion. So you'd use the gelid cryothium from that. The cryothium reactor core um, is pretty useful. I actually use it a lot. Um, it's 80 heat per tick loss and doubly effective when it's not adjacent to any other cryothium um, reactor coolers. And then there's also the redstone reactor cooler. It's 80 heat per tick and it's, it gets the double effect when it's uh, adjacent to at least one fuel cell compartment. So one of these. Um, it's kind of nice for just surrounding your fuel cell compartments with these um, because it's fairly easy to get the double um, on that um, depending on your design because once you get in there you're going to notice it's best to decide like a pattern that you're going to build with and go with that. Um, the glowstone reactor cooler is very very nice 80 heat per tick and it gets quadruply effective when it has graphite on all six of its sides. So um, very very powerful um, depending on your pattern and then lastly there's this liquid helium reactor cooler uh, removes 125 heat per tick but putting it um, 
in the reactor, the position is not going to matter. It's not going to get the double effect. So, um, you know, it's it's a little bit less efficient than these. You're not going to want to use this all the time. Um, but it is good for filling uh, spaces in in your reactor that you can't really get um, any double effects. Because without double effects, it's better than anything else. Um, and then lastly, you're going to have, of course, your controller block. So, um, you have the option of either a fission controller or a steam fission. So basically, do you want to generate RF or do you want to generate steam? And uh, once again, depending on your design, it can be more effective. Uh, because I've found that like this reactor right here, I've got it hooked up to a steam fission controller. And if you look in here, it is producing super dense steam. So uh, Basically, that can be broken down into a thousand millibuckets of dense steam, and then each of those millibuckets of dense steam can be broken down again into a thousand millibuckets of steam. So it's an astronomical amount of steam <laughs> that's being produced by that thing. Um, if we take a look inside of here, I'll show you the GUI really, really quick. So you can see the size of your reactor here. Of course, like I said, this one's a 17 by 17 by 17. Um, you can see how much. Uh, energy or steam is in the reactor right now <coughs> which I have noticed this this one will pump out just immediately um, any RF any steam anything um, so you're if you're plugged up to stuff you're generally not gonna build up much of a buffer in this um, you can see your fuel levels you can also see that here and you can see your energy or steam in this uh, bar as well so your fuel is here, um, your core heat will be in this bar, and basically it's going to tell you how hot this is. Now this one, of course, it has the negative heat per tick. This will never generate heat, unless I change the fuel. Now I noticed this uh, HEP241 oxide fuel um, will cause me to uh, generate some heat, so I have to be careful with that. Um, then you have the efficiency here. Um, which is basically telling you how efficient your fuels are. So with this design, which granted this one is not ideal. You could make it way better. Um, but this one is 1,598% efficiency. Um, and then this just shows you the uh, current fuel that's in there. And then this bar is basically your fuel depletion. So when this finishes, you're going to get a depleted cell um, from that. And you can see how many fuel cells uh, or... Um, yeah, fuel cell compartments are within the multi-block, so this one has 17. Um, you can see how much steam or RF per tick you're going to generate right here, and how much heat per tick you're going to generate right here. So if we take a look inside of this, you'll notice that I ended up, like I was building it out for quite a while, um, but it was just so big I finally got lazy and I was just like, okay, let's throw a bunch of these liquid heliums in there. Um, and kind of worked with it from there um, to get it to come out positive. Now. Uh, the way you turn these on is just a redstone pulse, um, and I believe, if I recall correctly, this can be anywhere on the multi-block. So if I was to throw, say, a lever here, no? Okay, I lied. <laughs> okay. Um, so it does need to be right next to the steam fission controller, uh, but that's fine. We can uh, turn that on, and you'll notice that it starts running, and it's working through fuel. It's not super fast going through. This is just uh, one of these fuel cells. So they do last for quite a while, and you'll notice here that we are generating steam, um, super dense steam, fairly quickly um, within this, considering that it's super dense steam and not standard steam. Now, just because you build a fission reactor doesn't mean it's going to produce super dense steam. So for example, over here, um, if I was to throw a steam fission controller onto this, throw in some sails, um, you'll notice right here that this one produces dense steam and that's because it's just it would take so long for it to generate a super dense steam um, that it's just going to produce dense now the larger you get of course the um, you know you might get into the super dense steam but this one produces uh, 244 billion steam per tick so um, quite a bit of steam uh, production now you'll notice this one is about to run through that fuel cell, and there we go. We got a depleted um, HEU-233 oxide fuel cell, and we could just throw more in there. Now as far as pumping items in and out of 
the reactor, everything's going to go through the steam fission controller. So if I was to put, say, conduits along this, they're not even going to go, going to connect to the reactor um, casings. They have to connect into the steam fusion, uh, steam, steam fission controller or the fission controller. So um, you're going to pump out your steam um, or power as well as pump in and out your items. So if you wanted to, you could use um, ender conduits and I don't have any here. No, yeah, I do. Um, <clears throat> you can use just the item conduits from Ender IO, and what I was doing was I was setting them to in and out mode, insert and extract, and this. And now, well, you'll notice that it got that uh, empty cell. Um, We can actually access it um, and if I wanted to I could throw in some fuel cells in there and you'll notice they're getting pumped into this so um, you can just set it up like that or however um, now if I was to say change this over and you can break these by the way it doesn't really matter you can break this while it's running um, I haven't noticed any kind of a downside to that but if I threw down say a steam fission controller of course that's not going to connect because we're not producing any kind of a liquid but with this design um, and like I said it's not a hundred percent efficient but we'll throw a lithium-ion battery on there and you'll notice that it will generate a um, hundred million RF rather quickly so uh, there we go 100 million and it's only 85 percent through the fuel so we can get a lot of power out of each fuel cell um, with this reactor um, so let's talk about actually building a reactor and some of the patterns that I've found personally useful uh, when you're laying this out so we'll go ahead and we'll say build a 5x5 five because five. I feel like we've covered all the blocks and stuff um, and whatnot. So let's do this. And we'll go ahead and just build a 5x5x5. Five by five by five. Like I said, you can make these any dimension that you want. But we're just going to go with the straight 5x5. Five five. Whoops. Alright. There we go. So the nice thing is when you're setting this up, we'll throw down a controller right there, and as you're setting this up, you can you can check um, with the controller and see how um, how efficient and stuff it's going to be. <coughs> so what you'll want to do is the first thing I generally do is I place my fuel cell compartments. So let's go with I don't want to lay this out. Let's go with double connected. Now this, chances are this is not going to be efficient enough to actually run um, safely, but we'll see. That's kind of the fun of this uh, mod is really getting to play around with it. Um, and one of the uh, designs, the patterns that I really, really like to use is uh, graphite block and then the glowstone reactor core and then graphite on top of that and then of course surround this with graphite and then what we could do is set up um, these cryothium reactor cores on the corners here because they're not touching anything um, actually I don't need that one just yet and then any of these spots that are connected to the graphite we can just fill in with this enderium and more cryothium on these corners and then more enderium like that and here you can do the redstone or you can do the cryothium it'd be the same output so it's not really gonna matter um, too terribly much and then we could say do this now chances are this is not going to be efficient enough um, on the cooling to 
<laughs> to actually be able to cool this, but we'll see. I don't want those. I want Enderium. And then Graphite. So usually what I'll do is I'll kind of start building it out and then I'll adjust it based on the amount of heat and stuff that we're producing. So if we come down here and we take a look now, and I was to say throw a fuel cell into this, you'll notice that we're producing 14,880 RF a tick, but we're also producing 15,200 heat per tick. So, ideally now we'd want to focus on getting this cooled down a bit. Um, the heat generation is honestly not bad. Like over here is one that I was playing with that was a 5x5. Five five, and um, that's steam. For me, it's just easier to really be able to read it with the fission controller um, over the steam one. So this one, um, we're about 10,000 on the positive. Now keep in mind that it also depends on the type of fuel that you're using. So for example, um, the fuel that I found that I really like is this HEU-233 oxide fuel. Um, its base power is 1200 RF per tick. Uh, the lifetime is 2,000 uh, seconds, and the heat is 800 heat per tick. Um, and you can see you can multiply the base power and the base lifetime there um, to get your actual output based on the reactor itself. And then, um, <coughs> and then your heat produced is based on um, that with the um, cell compartment positions. Pretty much like we talked about before, um, adjacent fuel cells and stuff. And um, the higher the heat level of the reactor, the more efficient the fuel will be. So that's one thing to keep in mind is that um, I know it's kind of a more recent addition, I believe, to nuclear craft. Um, or semi-more recent. <laughs> I watched some, some videos, but I think they were older, and, and they were like, well, heat doesn't matter. But... Um, Heat does matter now, so the higher that the heat level gets, um, it's going to actually increase its efficiency. So, for example, um, over here, this is all formed, right? Yeah. So, if we look over here, um, if we start running this, this one, for example, well, that's no good. Ba boom. Well, there we go. That's what happens when it explodes, by the way. Just a heads up. Oh, and we blew up some of this, and now plasma's leaking everywhere. That's great. Um, but anyway, the higher that your heat gets, the more efficient that it can be. But once again, I personally like having it just to where it can run safely all the time. Now, like I said, you could do this with, um, with a redstone control. However, um, I noticed that when I did that, you have to be very, very careful when you set that up because the redstone will, um, especially with a reactor that heats up really fast like that, the redstone is going to lag behind um, the heat production and it's not going to shut off in time. And what you're going to end up with is a blown up reactor. So, um, personally, I like just having the safety value um, over a little bit more efficiency. But it's kind of whatever you guys want um, as far as that goes. Now this did blow up all my shit. Cool. Um, okay, give me one second. I'm going to rebuild this back and uh, then I'll be back in just a okay, second. Okay, welcome back. So I rebuilt that and this time I built it out all the way. So we've got basically the way it's laid out just to keep in mind is I do the cryothium around there, um, enderium around the inner edges, and then graphite. Oops. And that. And that. And then we'll just do enderium around all these sides that are touching the graphite. And then top it off with more cryothium. And then you can build this directly on top of it by just bringing graphite out again uh, because those glowstone just need to be touching on all six sides. <coughs> um, now keep in mind 
um, this one I built out all the way this time. Um, you can put your fuel rods if you want just anywhere in the multi-block. So we could do that and then put say redstone reactor coolers. Those just need to be adjacent to at least one side of the uh, of the fuel cell. And uh, so all those are getting double power now. Um, and then we could put say enderium on these edges. Um, and then you end up with you always seem to end up, unless you have just a matching pattern in like a larger reactor, you'll end up with these gaps here. Like I couldn't put a cryothium um, to get double here. And that's where you'll use your liquid helium um, reactor coolers. And then like right here, let me, there we go. Um, then right here, of course, I could put cryothium again. I could put cryothium here and say here and here. And then you could fill in these empty gaps here with the liquid helium reactor cores. Um, because the glowstone method is nice, but you're not going to be able to build a just solid reactor out of that pattern because um, it doesn't offset the amount of heat that it produces. So you're going to have to uh, kind of mix and match and figure out um, a design that works for you. So if we hop out here, um, we'll check and see what the... Um, power and everything is on this and by the way um, I don't believe I mentioned it the controller can go most anywhere <laughs> um, as long as it's attached so if I connected it here that would work fine if I connected it here that would work fine um, okay it looks like the top sides do not well that works just not not there. No, it wouldn't work there, would it? That makes sense. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, as long as it's somewhere along that edge there, it'll work perfectly fine. So we'll just set it there. Now you'll notice without any fuel in here, we are getting negative 9,585 heat per tick. But if we start throwing power in there, um, you'll notice that that shifts. Now keep in mind, like I said, the power um, change will affect it. So for example, if I was to throw in this oxide fuel cell, you'll notice we get a lot more power, but we get a lot more heat. And just because it's like for, well, I can't show you on that reactor, but just because you have one fuel that um, has a negative heat, that doesn't mean that um, that's going to be the case all around. So for example, uh, if we go in here, this one, for example, only produces 300 RF a tick and 100 heat. Uh, this LEU 233. Um, but if I was to throw a fuel cell in there, you'll notice that we come out um, with negative heat while running that fuel. So you kind of have to, from what I've noticed, you, you kind of want to build your reactor based on your fuel. Because it's going to be different. Um, for example, that big reactor there ran... Um, this oxide fuel cell perfectly fine produced like um, a lot of RF a tick like a million or something um, RF per tick but if I switched over to this HEP 241 oxide um, it did shift down to um, where it was producing like 10,000 heat per tick so um, you kind of want to keep your fuel in mind when you build out the reactor because these like smaller RF per tick ones, um, of course they, they have smaller heat um, and they're going to be able to have a lot more uh, graphite blocks in there than um, you know one of these higher end powers. So um, generally what I've noticed when I look through the fuel cells is there's like a 300 RF per tick with 100 heat. There's a 600 RF uh, with 250 heat. There's a 1200 RF with 800 heat. And then there's a, a 2400 with 2000 heat. And there's, there's different kinds in here. Um, for example, um, the LEU 235 oxide fuel is um, 300 at 100. And uh, the LEU 233 is a 300 by 100. So, um, 
just keep that in mind. Now, generally, it's just the uh, the elements are the same. HEU is 1,200, so if we come over here, HEU again is 1,200. Um, so there's not really too much of a difference. The lifetime power heat's all the same on those. Um, so you've pretty much got those uh, different fuels. Now there's also, if I recall, we can use this TBU oxide, right? No, we can't. Okay. Never mind. So it's pretty much just those fuel, those four um, fuel types that you can use because it's just, um, after that, it's really just duplicates of um, those four different fuels. There's two different kinds, but... Um, but yeah, so chemistry was honestly never my strong suit, so I was more of a physics uh, person, so, um, but uh, yeah, so um, this one, like I said, will run the, this oxide fuel cell just fine, um, but not the HEU. Now we could make it a little bit more efficient, um, you know, I don't, I don't personally know right now what the most efficient design is. I've been playing with it and um, and whatnot. So if I figure out a really good design um, while I'm messing with it, I will let you guys know. Now, chances are it will probably be using the HEU 233 fuel cells. Um, I tend to like those because they're 1200 RF per tick and 800 heat per tick. Whereas these, you know, you get double the power, but you get uh, two and a half times the heat. So, eh, you know, you kind of want to find your personal balance between the the heat and the power generation. <coughs> but anyway, um, I'm going to end out the episode there. As always, if you guys enjoyed it, please comment, like, subscribe. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. I feel like I've covered most everything. Um, you know, just keep in mind that you, if you want to get into the math of it, you can just, uh, tab over these, shift and tab, um, or shift and, I'm sorry, shift and mouse over these and get a lot of information on the exact math for this. Um, but it's a lot of just trial and error, um, in my experience. So I would suggest if you're building this for a survival world, definitely build it in creative to get your design down first. Um because I've noticed that when I lay out these blocks I'll end up um, say doing a pattern throughout the reactor and then I'll adjust things um, as needed remove some graphite add some more coolers that kind of thing um, because you're not it's hard to really just pick a design and just build the whole reactor out of it um, like a pattern unless you're using one of the lower end fuel cells now if you're using say the LEU 233 or something it's a lot more doable um, but like I said, I personally like this HEU 233 power uh, fuel cell um, the most. So um, it really just comes down to what kind of what kind of fuel cell you're going to use as to what reactor that you build. Um, but anyway, I'm going to end out the episode there. If you enjoyed it if you found it helpful as always please comment like subscribe it's very much appreciated let me know any questions that you have um, and I'll do my best to address those and don't forget down in the description I will put a link to the fuel um, uh, the fuel link for like fuel numbers and um, efficiency and everything is and what uh, RF and stuff that they're gonna put out and everything <laughs> like I said, a lot of good information on there. I was looking through that quite a bit. Um, when uh, Nuclear Craft Mod commented on the last video and had linked that, and I was checking it out and everything, and um, thanks again to him for that, for all the suggestions and stuff, because it, it definitely helped a lot. Um, and, yeah, so next episode, we will be messing with Particle Accelerators, um, I've started playing around with those a little bit, kind of trying to figure it out, um, mainly doing a lot of reading, really, at this point. Um, so we'll start messing with those. I believe those are fully implemented. Um, I know they were a work in progress for a while, but the blocks in here aren't uh, marked as uh, work in progress, and it seems like everything's here for it, maybe. Um and I'll also try to build a good reactor design for you guys and of course I'll do a separate video for that because um, 
um, it'll it'll probably take a little bit to build it out. And let me know if you have a preferable uh, size because I mean I could build it a 17 by 17. However, I feel like 17 by 17 is kind of a long shot for a normal survival mode, um, you know, gameplay. So maybe 11 by 11 or something like that. Um, so if you guys have a preferable size, feel free to let me know, and I'll try to work with that and try to build a good reactor design for you guys. And also let me know what fuel you'd prefer to use as well. And I will do my best. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm going to quit rambling. I'm going to end the episode out there. Um, so I hope you guys join me for next episode, and I hope you found this helpful, and I will see you next episode.